Hey Wofford fans, Phil Marcello here, welcoming you into Conquer and Prevail, Tracking the Terriers, presented by Pinnacle Hospitality. Each week on Conquer and Prevail, we will check in with various Wofford athletic staff members to see what they are doing to keep their programs ready for action. On this week's episode, we talk with Emily Grant and Trey Hollowell. Terrier fans, we now welcome on the head coach of the women's soccer team, Emily Grant. Hey, Phil. We're happy to have you on. So we'll get into your background right off the bat. Now, you played your collegiate soccer at Vanderbilt, um, and then you played a little bit professionally. At what point in time did you know that coaching was something that you maybe wanted to pursue? Um, I think during college soccer, I, I really enjoyed coaching. I did a lot of camps. Um, I was a camp counselor for all the camps at Vanderbilt and then other various universities in the area. Um, and I really kind of found a passion in that. Um, just because soccer has given me so much, I felt like it was, um, you know, an awesome way to give back to the, the future generations, um, what I've gotten out of it. And yeah, so I think as early as, um, you know, in college and then after college and, and after I got injured, I really kind of got into it um, in Tennessee when I was just working in the area in Nashville. And I worked at, at a club um, called Tennessee Soccer Club. And I really kind of, um, I guess, honed my craft there um, and, and realized, hey, this is kind of what I want to do. That's awesome. Now, a couple of your stops before you're out at UNLV, you were at Georgia Southern most recently. Um, when you got the call from Wofford, like what, what was so attractive about coming to Wofford? Yeah, um, I really, I wanted to, I, first of all, um, UNLV and Georgia Southern were both really great experiences for me growing in a lot of ways. Um, and I wanted to stay in the Southeast. Um, you know, my family's from Maryland and, and I went to school in Tennessee. So I, I really fell in love with the Southeast when I was in college and wanted to be in that area. Um, and then Wofford being a, a, a extremely um, high academic institution is something that I've wanted to get back to having been, um, you know, played at Vanderbilt. I think that the, the student athlete that you get at a university or a college like Wofford is, you know, in terms of their drive and, and um, the things that they prioritize and um, it's just, it's, it's fun to coach them. So I was really excited um, when the Wofford job came open. I applied and I wasn't sure of my chances of getting it. But um, when I came on campus for my interview, I fell in love with it. Um, the people are fantastic. Um, my interview was was really organic. It just felt like home. And um, again, I can't say enough about the people. And then when I got here, the the student athletes that were a part of the team um, were super welcoming, and they've just been stellar people first and foremost, and uh, even better athletes as well. Yeah, I mean, you know, for me, never having you know been to Vanderbilt or anything, I would imagine, like you said, two very strong academic schools. And Wofford is really a true student athlete. Now, in, in that thought, you have 13 players on your incoming class. You know, tell us just as, as a whole what you were trying to, to get out of this class, because that's a huge, huge chunk. Yeah, so um, this is my first, first full recruiting class. And, you know, I added a few in, in 19 to the tail end of it, but 2020 is my, my first one. So I knew it was going to be a bigger class. I wanted to bring in um, a certain caliber of athlete that would really push the standard and the level. Um, and I think I've done that with 13. I, I didn't anticipate it, if I'm being honest, to be that big. <laughs> I was thinking maybe, you know, between eight and 10, but um, it just kind of f fell that way. Um, and I think all of the kids that we're bringing in are, again, pushing the level athletically, but rounding out um, and kind of adding to the personality of our team. I think, you know, previous coaching staffs have done a great job with um, the recruiting process in the types of people that they've gotten to our program. And I wanted to continue that awesome culture. And I think um, this group is for sure going to just add and bolster that. Now, you know, every year you're in part of college athletics, you're going to lose some players, but fortunately for you, you have two of your top three goal scorers coming back, Savannah Vathi and, and Katie Gilligan, but Gilligan led the team in goals and she's a defender. Can you talk about her versatility as a player? Yeah. So she went, it's, it's funny because, um, you know, I don't, I didn't recruit most of the kids on the team, so I didn't 
um, know their backgrounds. And a lot of the girls on our roster are listed as things that maybe they were in club before they got to Wofford and they are no longer. Um, there's a bunch of defenders that are now forwards that have been converted and vice versa, which is hilarious to me. Um, but yeah, Katie spent most of her um, club career in um, England playing outside back. Um, and then she transferred, I guess, somewhere along the way um, into an attacking role. And she's been fantastic for us. Um, we've been working on kind of mixing up her, her game a little bit so it's not as predictable so she can s score different kind of goals. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm super excited about this, this next, um, this next year because we do have a lot of returning talent players, um, talented, uh, you know, players that have played a lot of minutes for us, um, so far. And on top of that, then we're just adding a lot of youth that are eager to get after it, that have come from, um, you know, high performing club teams. And I think with coupled with the, um, you know, the, the leadership of the upperclassmen and the talent of the underclassmen, it should be a really exciting time. And coming back for this year, again, is Matt Freibaum. And you also have an assistant, Will Clark. What can you say, you know, every, every coach needs a staff. Just talk about those two for a little bit. Um, so Matt um, has, I've known Matt since he's, you know, we grew up together. So I've known him for a long time and he's done really, really well. Um, particularly, I know the spring got cut short, um, but the time that we, we did have together, Matt was, was absolutely crushing the, the attacking side of it. Um, he had our girls firing on all cylinders and I was really excited to see if we could put it into a game. Obviously we didn't get that opportunity, um, but he really took our attacking play to the next level in the spring. Um, and I was, I was really excited about it. Um, and in the addition of Will, you know, he's another a younger guy that just brings a lot of energy and passion. He goes out with the goalkeepers, you know, 30 minutes to an hour before each session. And he's drenched in sweat every time. He's just re ready to go. Um, he, he trains as if, you know, he's training. So it, it, it's, it's great. And I think the girls really vibe off of Matt and Will because they're so passionate and you can, they just radiate it. Um, and I think that really drives our energy from session to session. Um, we're always having a good time out there. Uh, the spring that we did, the time that we did have, we really pushed the level competitively. Um, the, the kids were asked to compete at a higher level than they had been in the past. Um, and then they were also asked to, um, their mindset was, was a little, was, was on the docket. Um, we, we did a lot of like leadership stuff and, um, mentality, a stronger mentality together through adversity. Um, cause I think that's been a struggle, um, for us. So I was really excited about what we got to do in the spring. And I'm, I'm just hoping that we can carry that forward with the addition of the newbies, um, coming in the fall. That's awesome. So we'll, we'll end with a few questions back to kind of more focused on you. Um, Favorite soccer memory? Oh, um, I think it would be a game that I played as a freshman. I got to I got to start against Florida, and we played them to a double overtime. We actually lost four to three, which was gut wrenching, but um, it was an incredible game. We had so many fans. the The atmosphere was electric, and of course, it being like a big start for me as a freshman playing against Florida, who ended up winning the conference, was it was awesome. Okay, so when you're not playing soccer, coaching soccer, what, what keeps you busy? What kind of hobbies do you enjoy? Um, I really like outdoors activities, um, hiking, kayaking. Um, when I lived in Vegas, it was awesome because, you know, it's, it's a very different terrain out west. So I got to do a lot of hiking out there. Um, and then Colorado and Utah are very close. So I did a lot of act outdoors ex activities there. Um, so anything really outdoors is, is what I like to do. I, I really enjoy working out, exercising. Um, any kind of sport is awesome. Tennis, basketball, I love all of them. So anything act actively. Okay, growing up, who was your biggest, you know, sports hero, or biggest athletic influence that you were a fan of as a kid? Well, obviously, I think every little girl went growing up in the 90s loved Mia Hamm. She was yeah. like a big deal for me. Um, and I think it was, it's crazy because I really, I don't know why. And it's, it's funny that I ended up at Vanderbilt, but I, I had this attachment to, my dad was a huge basketball fan. So I love, and I played basketball until I, uh, high school. And um, so I loved Tennessee. Um, I loved Pat Summit. I thought they were incredible. Um, and it's funny, again, it's funny that I went to Vanderbilt, but um, yeah. So Pat Summit was a huge hero of mine. Gino Ariema is a huge hero of mine. Um, and just the basketball side of things. Um, and I actually 
Pat Summit came to one of my games um, that we played at Tennessee, and I was kind of starstruck. That was the first time I remember being starstruck. Um, she was just sitting in the stands, and it was pretty special. That's pretty cool. I mean, I, I can understand that. She's an absolute legend. Uh, but that, that'll kind of do it for this one. Just want to say thanks again for, for joining us, and, you know, we're really looking forward to the fall season. Awesome. Thanks for having me, Phil. Pinnacle Hospitality is an award-winning hospitality company based in Spartanburg, South Carolina. Their growing portfolio of internationally recognized hotels include Hilton Worldwide, Marriott International, Intercontinental Hotels Group, and Wyndham Hotels. Their burgeoning restaurant endeavors are poised to create a uniquely and locally inspired social dining experience. As a full service management company, their team provides expert management for owners and asset managers. This expert management is carried forward through Pinnacle's vision and mission. Waffle fans, we now welcome on rising senior guard for the men's basketball team, Trey Hollowell. Trey, thanks for joining us on Conquer and Prevail. Sure. Let's start off by telling the fans where you're at. You're back home in Kentucky in central time zone, but what have you been doing back in Kentucky and what, you know, what's been keeping you busy the last month or so? Uh, so the last month or so, I've gotten myself a job at Western State Hospital. It's like a mental health facility. And uh, yeah, I've been working there doing some work and, uh, Outside of work, I work out and uh, hang out with friends. Some of you know, I have uh, plenty of friends back home and uh, a couple of Division One players and other uh, level players that I work out with, stuff like that. So that's what I've been doing to keep myself busy. Awesome. Now, being from Kentucky, did you have a connection to Wofford or, or how was the process that you came to eventually commit to Wofford? Well, uh, the process was uh, recruitment. They recruited me uh, late in my senior year when I was, like, uh, just figuring out where I was, like, narrowing it down where I was going to go. And then I took a visit there. And uh, it just felt like home. And I, I never took another visit, you know. I had some other visits lined up after that, and I just I just didn't take them. I committed to offer right there. That's awesome. Now, this past season, you started to emerge more and more in the lineup. You started a handful of games and were really a consistent weapon when you did come off the bench. Um, what was that – how has that process been like each year, kind of ingraining yourself more so in the lineup? Well, each year I just want to uh, learn as much as I can, grow as much as I can, help the team win. And uh, from our freshman year, playing about five minutes a game and now to, you said, starting and coming off the bench, you know, each and every game. It's, it's just – it's been a process and it's been fun. And I think I've – taking some steps to help the team win. And I think that's a lot, a lot of more steps that I can take for next year to help us win and ultimately get back to a championship team. Now you spoke about learning. Now your, yourself and Storm are going to be the two, you know, senior leaders next year. And you guys have learned from, from players, you know, down low, you got your Cam Jackson, but out the guards, you've had Fletcher, you've had Nate. Um, talk about the leaders that you two have been able to learn from. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, Cam and uh, Matthew Pegum a couple years ago was like two of the best leaders that I've played with. Those guys were very vocal and they just pointed out anything that we needed to be pointing out and they were like all down for for the team. And, you know, that led to us winning the championship that year, I believe. And uh, Fletch, was, Fletch was a really good leader. He led more of his work uh, on the court. You know, I was always working out. Me and Storm and Nate were always working out with Fletch and we got in the gym as much as possible with him. So he led that way. And just learning so much from those guys, learning different ways to lead. And Nate was a very good leader as well. He was very vocal, very emotional leader. So I learned a lot from all four of those guys. Yeah, Nate, Nate certainly brought the energy, that's for sure. Now, you, you had some big games uh, last season. You had 17 a few times, including one time at Duke. But let's talk about one of the more notable games as a team that UNC upset. Let's, what, what was your feeling there? I mean, it, it was fun to be there. Yeah. Well, it was – we knew we had a chance to uh, play against those guys and fight and, and get a win. And It was just – you know, the first time I played there, personally for me, the first time I played there, I didn't actually get to play. But I was on the bench, like, celebrating the whole game because I knew, like, if we can stay in this thing, we can – we got a chance to win. And it was the same thing uh, – this time around, when I wasn't in the game, I was still cheering, but I got to play a lot this time and actually be in that moment. And so that meant a lot to me to actually 
you know, go in there and get a win and be up, be on the floor, you know what I mean? Yeah, you're pretty in a pretty exclusive club to be able to win in Chapel Hill and in two different buildings. I mean, that's that's not not something a lot of people could say. And we'll talk about one other game that that you had that stands out in my mind this past uh, season was you had 15 points in that double overtime victory against Greensboro. And you know, a lot of people fouling out and your scoring down the stretch really helped push the team to the win. What were you feeling late in that game? Well. Uh, in practice and stuff like that, like we always we always tied uh, if we're competing against each other and we're tied up. And you know I'm very comfortable taking those type of shots. So I just use that ability that I have for myself to you know be comfortable and take the shots that the team needs to you know take a lead when we're tied up for a minute or so. You know what I mean? Just to put us over the top. I'm very comfortable doing that. All right, we'll we'll do some quick hit questions for you. And, uh, you know, just take your time if you need a second to think of them. But what are some hobbies when you're not playing basketball? What keeps you busy? Playing the game, for sure. I'm playing Call of Duty, playing 2K with my teammates. We, we usually play together. Uh, last year, me and me and Nate and Messiah, Isaiah Bigelow, we, we gamed a lot outside of basketball. So that's one of my, my biggest hobbies. And uh, who, who would you say is the best uh, 2K player right now on the team? Best 2K player is me by far. <laughs> That's by far. Isaiah and Isaiah Messiah will argue with that. Donna will argue with that as well, but I think it's me by far. Uh, favorite sport other than basketball? See, I, I never really got into any other sport besides basketball. And then recently, these past couple of years, I've been like a football maniac so to say, just because, like, I've learned so much about it in the past couple of years, is like, you know, just going on Wofford games and just uh, keeping up with the NFL a little bit. And so I just started, like, I started playing Madden as well. So I, that's what really made me, you know, really want to learn more about football so I can win Madden games. And I got really good in that for a little bit. But I haven't played in a while. But, yeah, that's other cool. sport is football for sure. I wish I would have played it when I came up, but I didn't have it at my high school. I'm sure you would have been, been real good out there, that athlete that you are. But it's amazing how much you learn about a game just from playing a video game. Uh, I know it's not the same, but still still pretty cool. Um, favorite basketball player can be two parts, growing up or, and right now. And it could be one and the same. You tell me. No, it's one and the same. It's LeBron, easily. It's my, I think the greatest player of all time, my favorite player. Just because he's such a great all-around player and he's – He's athletic freak, and he's, his IQ for the game is just amazing. And what he does outside of basketball is also amazing. So, my favorite player. I thought I thought I remembered you as a LeBron fan, but I, I was yeah. like, I'm gonna ask on here and just double check. Well, yeah. Trey, uh, you know that that pretty much does it for this. I, I really appreciate you joining on this episode of Conquer and Prevail. Sir, thank you.